In this episode of Mighty Car Mods, of course, we've finished work on the Golf for a little while. We made almost 280 kilowatts at the wheels. Very happy with that. Of course, there will be a battle that is imminent, but you've probably noticed that the bonnet of this one is down. <laughs> the bonnet of this one is up. So today, we're going to be fixing the Evo and getting it ready for battle. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. Um, living the Evo life, which usually involves having your bonnet up for at least part of the time of owning it. Their cars are cool though. What a mad car though. It looks mad, like, it's so mad to drive. I drove it here, it was so good. On the old ECU with none of the sensors and stuff connected, so I couldn't really boost it, but it feels good and I'm excited and I'm so pumped to finally, hopefully, by the end of today, have this thing running properly. Yeah. Like drive it. And ready for a run, yeah. which is going to be fun. Needs to uh, of course, we're down here at Haltech. We're going to be using some of the Genii. Is that, a, is that the plural for a genius? Sure, it is We're now. going to be using some of the Genii down here. Um, there's going to be some wiring done today. He's going to get an ECU yep. as well. Wiring, ECU. Uh, we're going to set sensors? up some sensors and we're going to set it up ready for future mods as well. Because if we're in here wiring it, we might as well do any sort of other little bits of wiring at the same time that mean later further down the track, when hopefully this is making even more power than it does today, yep. we can um, just plug stuff in. And I think that's a consideration as well. There's a lot of Golf versus Evo stuff going. That's making really good power for what it is but the potential for making power and the, just the amount of stuff that's available for an crazy. Evo is just absolutely yep. ridiculous. So yep. the idea is to future-proof it a bit so that, you know, this might kind of get to here, but the Evo can just go through the roof and so we're going to set it up so it has the platform to do more. Because you're going, like, full crazy, right? I'm going to try. Full hectic. you got to. That's what you do when you own an Evo. So I'm um, going to go and track down someone who knows how to wire stuff. Yes. And uh, get let's this go done. find him. Let's just get done, Martin. Get oh, look, there done. he is. It's like oh, he was, there he the was just time. standing there watching us all <laughs> awkward like. I'm here with Dave. Dave is one of the biggest legends in the world. Um, Dave, have you done any work on Mitsubishis before? I have done. Do you own a Mitsubishi? I've done a few Mitsubishis. Excuse me. Myself, yes. Have you done any work on it? Twisted Man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Twisted Man. Don't yeah. pretend that you Orange, forgot. Orange, purple, silver, whatever. Maroon. Whatever colour it is. Well, today we have this Tri -diamond. beautiful blue yeah. Evo 9. Um, which we've had some dramas with, as you may have already seen, um, just getting it to work. But do want, today... Do you want to sell it? No. Oh, okay. Today is, is the day... Do you want Twisted? <laughs> Come on. Want Evo? Can uh, we focus? Okay, sorry. Let's Back focus. So today we're going to make it work, and we're focusing because up till now I haven't really been able to drive it properly. I've had check engine lights wall to wall the whole time. So yeah, right. the plan today is to put an ECU in it, yep. um, put a Haltech in it, and we've got a few extra like fun bits that the Haltech enables us to do, yep. which is... Coils? Direct fire. Direct, please explain direct. So direct fire. So with the Evo, the outputs, uh, you've got two outputs on the yep. factory ECU. But four cylinders. That runs four coils, uh, two coils. Yep. And they're shared and paired as they As we fire. saw. And when if we... you put them the wrong way around, the car doesn't work, like, Dave. Like the other day when we put them on backwards. Oh, right. And then wondering why it sounded like rubbish. <laughs> but That's yeah, exactly what it sounded you've like. You've got like two of them, except you've got a coil of the wire that comes There's off like a There's a little lead that comes out and yeah. goes there, and this one has a little lead that comes out this you way. You can pretend so. to be that. And then, so then, the, so then the best bit is that right now we're going to add some friends. Yes. So what's involved in adding these friends? Uh, essentially, we need to make yes. another two wires come out here yeah. somewhere so we can actually fire all four channels yes. directly. So Which allows us to run sequential... No, that's yeah. sequential injection. Wow, it's, uh, whatever. It's, it's the same thing. Yeah, you're shooting I know, it. For I know one, what you mean. Yeah, rather than batch. You can, no, wasted spark. Wasted spark. Spot on. <sighs> so many things to remember. You've it's been crazy, listening, Martin. I've been trying, but it's just, there's so much to learn. <laughs> um, which is which is the fun part of it. So we've got these coils. They don't plug straight in. So I've got this coil adapter. Yep. Um, which is made by uh, Platinum Racing Products, yeah. which is a, a cool thing it's, that will. It's really really cool. Yeah, it's just, just a, a nice done, looking thing that means we can it's plug molded, our coils in. Molded for the coils and everything. And then we can cool. bolt that into the, the top of the rocker cover. Yeah, man. So. That's that's the that's, that's cool, one man. bit that we're going to do. That's and really involves cool. Changing some of these stalky stemmy things yep. to make it fit properly because these are 370Z coils. Yep. There's some conjecture about 
R35 coils look the same, but the part number is slightly different. Yep. Um, the stem on it is a little bit longer because it's a completely different engine, yeah. which is, yeah, it right. all makes sense. Occasionally they're sold as R35 coils, but they're not. So you just got to make sure you get what you yeah. get what you're after. Yeah. They'll be totally fine for what we're doing because even if we ever make 100%. 400 kilowatts, that's 100 kilowatts a cylinder. And and a lot of the time the wasted spark is completely fine, fine that's, for the job that's, that's actually true. on hand here. This is but we're modding the car. So yeah, yeah, this is, kind of mighty, this is my car mods. And this is, it's actually really fun. And I, so. I got converted by the fact when we did my MX-5 mm. and we changed to this setup with yep. old Yaris calls or something, just yep. the drivability. I just really like it. So, yep. and I think also this is not a particularly expensive mod. Yeah. You just have to run the wires. Yep. And if you've got the ECU anyway, you might as well do it, right? and we're never, ever, ever going to be held back by these. No. Which is amazing yep. as well, which That's is really exactly cool. Right. Yep. We've also got some other little bits and pieces. So some of this stuff we are going to put in today and some not. We've got yep. like temperature sensors, we've got oil pressure sensors, and we've got a boost control solenoid. Yep. Um, there is a boost control solenoid on there. Yeah, um, I actually just found it. It's actually the same. Oh, so cool. we probably won't need to so do that. So we potentially just change some wires on it. Or we can just neaten it up a little bit and make it, it look pretty. So Very good. Cool. So that's the good thing about buying a modified car. Yep. As opposed to all the bad Half stuff the that we've already across. done for you. Um, so some pressure sensors that we'll probably wire up today but may not go on this engine sure. for now, but yep. they'll be ready. We'll get them in the right, right rough sort of area. And then, but this is, this, is, this is the exciting bit. What's in this one? Yeah. Oh, wideband. So yeah. wideband, is this, this is a new one, right? This is a brand new one. What's, what's special about it? So this is the newer design, so we've gone away from the platinum style silver box. Oh, it's um, tiny. Yeah, yeah, so this one's pretty cool. So we can mount this one out oh, it's loud little. and proud in yeah. the engine bay, which is pretty cool. Put it up on show next to your flex sensor or something like that. Oh, awesome. Um, this one will, the sensor, will plug directly into the yep. 4.9 sensor now instead of 4.2. Yeah, let's use 4.9, so that's a newer version, right? Smaller mm. wafer and it heats up quicker different design of sensor. Yep. So, um, so that's pretty cool as well. So we can literally plug that one in. Cool. Um, can connection, very, very easy. Simple, oh, right. simples. Literally plug that in, plug yeah. it into ECU or little can hub or whatever, done. Yeah. But you've also, you can daisy chain that, right? Yeah, so that's exactly right. So if you had a, let's just say, for example, another can device, which yeah. was a thermocouple. Yeah. So if we want to do four temperature probes yeah. in each exhaust runner, yep. we can then just run that in the engine bay as well and yep. just link the two together oh, so you don't awesome. have to run cables and cables and yeah cables and if you do it afterwards afterwards you're not going back into on. your into yeah. your car just makes things that's so much very easier. cool awesome and then the star of the show is one of these bad boys now it's been quite a few years since we first put in the first one which went into supergram the very first one yes into the very Supergrams. first one that's exactly yeah. right yeah which was a elite 2500 yep now these these are these you can run like a V8 if you want to. You've got enough outputs to run a V8. Yep, so you've got direct fire. Yep, which one is this. Per, yep, so you one eight per of them. cylinder. And then you've got eight injector outputs as well. So oh, you can goodness. control eight sequential injectors. Look at it, Look at that little box. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And so what we're doing today as well is we're gonna use a, that's a patch harness. This is an Evo 9 plug and play adapter. And you are sell these? We do, oh, yes. So you can, you can buy that, that and that and plug it in and drive. Plug it in, load the base map. Very cool. So that goes into Started. there, and that goes into there, yep. and then you plug your factory wiring into that. Straight into oh, there. Oh, that's yeah. so, so clean. That's neat, yeah. So the, one of the benefits of these is potentially, if I wanted to, so say I was driving the Evo during the week and Supergramps on the weekend, mm. I could have one ECU yep. and just go plug, yep. and plug a USB cable and go load Supergramps, and yep. 30 seconds later drive, like, drive yep. it for whatever, yep. and then go back. So you could potentially wire your cars and just have one of these, yep. if you wanted to. Yep. How many different maps could you have on there? Like, how many cars could you run, hypothetically, on that? Well, it depends. You, you could want. load, if you've got a map for it, you could literally upload it From straight away. Computer, so yeah. if you had, like, a drag car, a drift car, a street yeah. car, or if whatever, you, guys... you just have one ECU and plug and play. 100%, yeah. That's if you guys cool. were going to do a super project next, you could literally just take this ECU, Put it into that with our plug and play for that. One of them. If you bought a GDR, you could do the same sort of thing. Plug right. it in, make it happen, load the map, and then that's start excellent. driving. Obviously, that's another extra saves a lot of money. That's true. Yeah. That's an extra couple of steps. But I suppose conversely, though, if you bought an ECU that was only plugged into an Evo, it's yep. with the car forever. Spot on. Or sold. Or, or you can only sell it to somebody else. Yeah, with, with, with once an Evo. You've sold yeah, your okay, car cool. So it's a, it's a yeah. different it's a different way of doing things. It's just but, a different way of doing. Um, it. I'm excited about this because it opens up a few opportunities with both our injection, our safety stuff, fuel pressure, oil pressure, knock control, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, or is, yeah, engine protection is, is exciting so that deal. I don't blow things up. You know what's cool about that is that if you reflash something that we did over here, 
the money that you spend to reflash, like that's just in the car. It's, it's the just car. there for good. Yeah. So as an investment for the car, that's fine. But if you're going to sell the car, whereas that, as you say, Marty, you could you could Holding potentially just have one ECU with you. That's like the mixtape that's got all your cars <laughs> on it. And <laughs> and when you start a new project car, you don't have to factor in the cost for an ECU because you just carry it around in a backpack. Like kids that carry their steering wheels in their backpacks, like the cool kids. <laughs> the cool you, kids. you carry an ECU in your backpack yeah, instead. You could. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's a good could. point. So there's a few um, little... Um, another cool thing about that is it, it doesn't devalue over time because we're always adding functionality oh, yeah. to it as well. So it, it, it oh, doesn't you lose value control. in that. Yeah, that so was a firmware done, update, right? Yeah, exactly. So we do firmware updates all the time. Yeah. And cool. um, all you have to simply do is download it from the, um, from the software yep. when you're connected to the net, and then you essentially get all these upgrades just like, as we keep guys, punching them out, which is pretty cool. We are cool in the future. We're totally in the future. So what we're seeing on here, so you've just got the plug-in, which is like yep. would run a stock Evo. See you later. So if you want to start yep. adding stuff, then you can just sort of you know, yeah, plug you can, some extra wires. You can either do what I did, which is hack in here and change things around here. Yep. Otherwise, there is an auxiliary plug where you can add in some very, oh, cool. very simple things like your air temp, a flex fuel sensor, uh, external map yeah, sensor. Nice. We've allocated a lot of stuff up here ready to go. Very good. Cool. So this gives us, yeah, fuel pump, like extra fuel pump outputs, yep. our sensor inputs. Yes, uh, correct. And, and if and when, and it'll be when, because I freaking love it, when mm. we go e-throttle, we've got the pedal and the throttle. Yeah. So that means we can just run this one inside the car yes. and this one outside the car, yes. plug them in, yep. click a button, yep. drive the car. And then we could do fun stuff in the future, which has also just been released on yep. uh, the throttle blip function as yeah. well. So Is that when you change the unit, it goes... Yeah, <laughs> so you don't have to <laughs> double clutch and throttle blip yourself. Double and clutch like you should. You're just literally going to put a clutch switch and it breaks. Uh, switch in awesome. and then we'll get that done too so that's pretty cool very good well that i mean doesn't look like a lot of stuff but i know that's still going to be a lot of fiddling mm. so we're going to start mm. running some wires in there Beautiful. we're going to pull the old ecu out check that our rings working and then put it in and then once it's in mm. we get our tall friend tuning fork throw it on the dyno yep. and we'll probably make the same power but we can make it we'll reliably know how no check engine lights, we know how we're getting there, we have, and we have the upgrade we'll path for We know that we're able to do it reliably yes. this time. Very what did we make last time, do you remember? 270. 280 Two on the dyno sheet I bought it with and 270 here, so it's okay. different dyno, different mm. day. Mm. Okay. Um, but I reckon we'll yeah, be in the same ballpark. Yeah. What I also brought with me is the original blow off valve, so it's a plastic cord one that comes on the car. These are, are known to leak. Yeah. Um, so what I wanted to do... When I they get to a be, certain boost level, yes, you, I they, thought they start... 300 kilowatts, right? 320 kilowatts. Scotty was saying 320 kilowatts, which we might not get near mm. with this, and mm. like 22 pounds or something. But yeah, The ultimate boost control. I'm interested to see mm. if, um, if we see any difference with this um, original valve too yep. over the GFB one that we put in there. So we might have nice. to play with that later if we get the yeah, car yeah, working cool. nicely. Nice. So should we just... We're just we should just jump in it. This isn't disrespected nose, I don't think. I reckon Skin this is it. like, let's just... Yeah. Smash it out. Cool. All right. Are you keen? Yeah, man. Let's All do right. it. Let's do it. B before lunch. Remember we said that in the past and we're still here at dinner time. Mm. All right, let's get in. <laughs> <laughs> it goes before lunch, before dinner, and soon it's by breakfast, it'll be done. By breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> First up, it's negative strap off the battery and then I can remove the glove box and unplug the existing ECU. We'll be using all the existing wiring and then running a few more wires through the firewall to run our extra equipment. Any sensors or add-ons we think we may run in the future, we're also putting wires in for now so we don't have to keep pulling everything apart to add them in later. The ECU will run the factory coils out of the box when you plug it in using the patch loom. Upgrading the coils now future-proofs the car and saves me having to get a retune if I was to change them later on. The old coils can be removed, making way for our fancy new bracket. It's worth making sure your rocker cover gasket isn't leaking, as the spark plug tubes filling up with oil will ruin your day. The factory Nissan coils have stems on them that are too long and won't fit under the coil cover. Changing the stems is just a matter of removing the factory one, swapping over the spring and boot and then reassembling. This will make it bolt down tidily onto the top of the engine. Spring is in. That's so cool. 
Just a nice, neat way of using like a relatively cheap that's part, awesome. 370Z coil. Yep. And making it work on, a, on an Evo. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to put them in. There are a few different products on the market and methods for doing this kind of conversion. It's relatively common and cheap if you're using another OEM coil. Some OEM coils don't have the spark energy to keep up with an engine making big power. So be sure to do your research before you buy. Next, we're going to install the wideband oxygen sensor into the O2 housing that's bolted on the back of the turbo. We had a blanking plug installed to get it here, which now needs to be removed. The lower intercooler pipe needs to be taken off to get access, which is quite tight against the radiator and turbo wastegate actuator. The last few jobs in the engine bay are to tap into the power supply for the coils and add some grounding points onto the engine. We can then tie up the spare sensor wiring that we'll use later down the track. We're also going to borrow the existing air intake temperature sensor and connect up our flex sensor. We can then drop the car down, check that everything's connected correctly and get the car onto the dyno. It's time, Martin. It's time. We've made all of these Star Wars references, A New Hope, <laughs> Tick, Tick, Boom, one of the best Star Wars films ever. I love that Star Wars What was film. the other one? Disrespected Strikes Back? The Return of the Evo. Return of the, yep, that one. No, the Evo Strikes Back. The Evo Strikes Back. There it oh, is, Martin. This is, this is awesome. This is exciting. You know Martin, what? you've just updated. I have, and look at this. It's so neat. So that's our factory staff, of which we're using some of. Then these are all the sensors that Dave has wired up. And these are the coils that you and I put in. Oh, that is and excellent. And that is the CAN cable, which runs the oxygen thing. And then this goes into the ECU. And, and then there's the vacuum, pre the pressure source here. Martin, look at these clever gentlemen over here. Aren't they clever? Look how clever they are. I know, man. So this is a very satisfying thing of getting the factory plug and going... Click. Oh, and the so other, Lego. Know, and the other factory plug and going... Click. Oh, dude, it's Star Wars Lego. And this factory Lego. plug and going... Click. And bang, that's now speaking the Haltech language. And so now we grab this one and go click, and this one and go click, and this little pigtail one hanging off here, that's the CAN cable, which goes click, and then we can read off here what this is. So we've got uh, pumps, that's for later. Coils, the coils that you and I did, go click. Martin, this is excellent. I know, isn't it? So throttle and pedal, that's for later, and then sensors, and look at this. Click, and the only thing left to do is the pressure source to find out what's going on with vacuum and boost. Boom, we'll put a little cable tie on that just for peace of mind. It probably doesn't need it, but we've um, run over that problem before. And look at that, man. Wow. That's cool. We're gonna leave it out, of course, while we're still like testing and tuning and everything. And then eventually there's a whole bunch of room up here behind the glove box to put PCUs and stuff and like mount it all nicely, which will Far look really out, cool. Man. Um, but for now, that's gonna stay out. Um, I just wanna acknowledge, Martin. I wanna acknowledge something. Yep. This all started with the Wasabi 900. I know. And Too Sexy. It did. And now can you feel the cool breeze coming because there is an epic battle <laughs> that is imminent <laughs> between the White Walkers and Arya Stark. Stop it. No, I mean, this Michael, be a everybody big... knows I shouldn't say that, that Sting and Stop Michael it. Bolton will fight it out. That's true. Thank you. No, how about Michael Bolton versus Ramsey Bolton? That's your people and my people right, in one done. battle. So Who do I'm, you want I'm to be? Michael, I'm Michael Bolton. Okay, you shall be from this forward on Michael Bolton and I shall be Ramsey Bolton. And we'll, uh, they'll, they'll duke it out for who's got more notoriety. It's an epic we'll... battle, man. <laughs> I can feel it. All right, well, I think it's time to get our very uh, friendly um, tuning fork to plug his laptop in and yep. do the we'll keyboard cap. We'll load up some dragon glass. Oh, I'm getting keen. And then we're going to load it on the dyno and hopefully it works. Amazing. Um, I'll grab my laptop. They're coming to life. So we've plugged the ECU in, but before we did that, because we're here, it was easy for me to just load a map into it on the bench. Davo, being a wiring guy, has already gone through and set up a map with all the inputs and outputs in the right spot. So that saves me a heap of work because, well, I don't know where all the inputs and outputs are. So I'm sure I could read Davo's awesome diagrams, but he's done all that already. So 
All I'm going to do now is just go through and calibrate anything in the car, like throttle position sensor, stuff like that. And then I'll go through and make sure all the sensors are actually working. Um, the thermo fan is always on at the moment, so I suspect that we just need to make that on when it's off and off when it's on. So out of however many settings there, there's one setting that's wrong, that's, that's done pretty well. Um, then we'll cross our fingers, try and get the thing to start and run, and then hobble it onto the dyno and, and try and make the first 100 kilowatts. Is it time, Scott? You ready, mate? Is this your Evo map? No, I wish it, no, nah, because mine was 2.4. Oh, of course. So the ignition map was heaps different. So anyway. you've got an e the 4G63 base map type thing. Base map, and then I'll start from that and then just go and massage it to suit this particular car. So it's not cool. starting from the very beginning because yeah, yeah. it would take forever. Yeah, for sure. But we're going to start her up. Already? It's first start on Haltech. Fingers crossed. Is it going to work? We very rarely do this as an actual first start. No, we should. Yeah, it's, all, it's all so neat. We have to. Ready? Here we go. Go, go, go. Come on. going. Come on. Oh. Almost got there. Right. Didn't quite clear up, did it? It didn't have enough fuel. So you could tell that? Um, I could hear it and the wideband was yep. displaying huge numbers. Super lean. So... Like in the 20s. <laughs> I'm just going to go through and just artificially add a heap of fuel just to make sure that cool. it's going to go. Oh, hey! That sounds like a 4G. Uh, that sounds good. No. <laughs> cool, man. That's pretty cool that I drove it here a couple of hours ago and now it's running again with a completely different system, different coils, different everything. It's alive. That's very good. You got the coils around the right way. That's yes. a big deal. Yep. Um, Davo's harness is all sorted, big deal. Yep. It's on ethanol. Oh, it's so good. Um, so keen. So keen to actually drive it. And now you can see what's going on here. The reason why it's just tricky is that it's it's idling pretty well, but it's still, it it's lean as, and you can hear yeah. the little hunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So We I, sort all that now, right? I don't want to make step. a lot of changes, because what we'll do is, I don't want to do anything when it's cold. I want to do everything when it's hot. Oh, okay. And then come back and do everything else. Because if I do start. corrections now, yep. I don't know if the base fuel map's right. Yep, yep. Um, so, man, congratulations. Load, loader on the dyno, huh? Big deal, big deal. All right, let's do it. It's been a very drama-free experience so far, but that doesn't mean the Evo will be leaving under its own power. If something goes wrong, it's an automatic win for the German sausages. Dinos have a knack for finding weak links in car builds, but Scotty is confident that this Evo is going to pull some solid numbers. Well, Martin, the time has come. It sounds very official and like it's a big deal, and it is a big deal. Because we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna make this old, not, well, old 4G63 do what it was always meant to do and be awesome. Man, you've done a really nice job. Everything's finished. You've done a really nice job. So is Dave. Oh, thanks, man. Dave has killed it. All the He's harness is all pretty it. and nice. Um, man, everything's set up. Yep. We've got our rough sort of shapes and numbers in there, so the thing idles and yeah. is just doing enough. Yep. So perfect. Good thing about doing an engine that is common and being done a lot of times before is you're not really guessing with this, are you? As man, much. This is the way all the sensors are calibrated, the way all the solenoids work, yeah. we know all that stuff, like you said, yep. because it's so common. So yep. a lot of the setup's already done for us, which bypasses a heap of the tuning mm -hmm. and makes us look pretty good pretty quick <laughs> because it's, it's done for us. Coils, flex fuel, new wideband, new wiring, harness ready for sensors when we go bigger and crazier engines. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just time to get in there and, and have a go. Yeah, exhaust drop? manifold and all of this looks beautiful and yep. not leaky and... Seems to be working. I'm hearing some, a bit of ticking, but it comes and goes, which is interesting because it didn't come and go before. It was just ticking all the time. And now yeah. it'll stop for half an hour and then it comes back, so... I wonder with the oil temp and after we give it a bit of a boot full. See what happens. Just see what it does. And also be prepared that the whole thing might throw a leg out of bed. We just... <sighs> These don't do that. They don't, okay. Well, well you're on record Well, now. they do, but they don't. We get in the car and rolling doing some low load tuning and almost straight away we have bad noises. Yeah, see you mate. Hey. Is that a setup thing? Or oh, wiring? It's a plumbing thing. Oh really? 
a weird noise. Oh, PCV. PCV blew off. I don't know if the clamp was on it properly. That could be something really simple. Wow. That clamp was back here, but I'm, I'm sure that yeah. means it's been me messed with maybe when we are doing wiring or something. It works itself out, doesn't it? Except when it doesn't. That massive backing leak we just caused. It might have just, yeah, it probably did just annoy the idle controller a little bit. <laughs> Drive's so nice. Good. I'm glad to hear that. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> I would say that's fairly effortless. Yeah, you know, it just did it. That's really cool. Yeah. Really? Motor's still there. What's that? The motor's still in it. It sounded like a cooler pipe. Achoo! Was cool. that a cooler pipe? 100%. Ah, oh, man. man. Man, we were... Why did you sacrifice all you there? I thought we were on a winner there. Popping cooler pipes is just such a pain in the butt. Well, we were on the right track there though, so I'm not so, going to touch anything. No, 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 that's, that's looking really solid, man. And we'll be able to do it without lots of check engine lights driving down the road. And a wide band that works. At the moment. And engine we're... protection. And logging. So this is the pipe giving us all the grief and this is the clamp that I've just pulled off. It's um, it's a bit thrashed and old. There's little welds on there as you can see that sort of help try and hold it in but you've got to get it just right. There's also some funny tension between this clamp and this one where the pipe sort of ha is not sitting in the correct position. So I'll, um, I'll pull it out and tweak it as best I can. Everything's really hot, especially the exhaust over there. Um, and one of the other legends that works at Haltech, uh, Luke, has lent me this clamp off his Skyline intercooler, uh, which I will be able to put a bit more tension on and it's kind of going to be a bit more even. It's not a perfect fix, but it's uh, better than nothing. Skate, yep. and then with a little bit of boost. Yep. Mate, overall, we're a bit richer everywhere. Yeah. We've picked up 15 kilowatts down the bottom. Yep. Up the top. We both run 22 pounds, so same, same. So, we'll, so before we leave, we're running 23. <laughs> what, what, Target 23. What, what number do we want? Because we're seven kilowatts down of where we need to be. From the other car? Yeah. Oh, we can fix that. <laughs> I think for the science of it, it'll be very interesting to have two cars with the same power. Like, I mean, this is too sexy and twisted, isn't it? And see see where the strengths and weaknesses are. So I'm 10 kilowatts down, it all sort of gets a bit, well, I'll make less power. But what's crazy is we can make it. We're, we're choosing we're choosing to limit it based on other outside factors, like not exploding stuff. We're not and... choosing. It's telling us. <laughs> it's telling us not to do it. Oh, the car is. <laughs> yeah. Do you think? The car don't want to do it. I okay. promise you. I believe you if you say it, man. The only way you'll beat him is with a Conrod. Like, like... <laughs> <laughs> like... Yeah, cool. I'll, I'll take that. That's fine. If you think this is the number, dude, this is the number. Oh, well, we can, you know, we got it, you know. I think that what we might do is put... We'll, we'll leave the same boost and everything, powering it down low. Yeah, fine. But up high, we'll sneak a bit more into yeah, it. Yeah, that's cool. So, in this little block here, one, two. A bit more timing. Just, yeah. just a little bit more. 
Just a little bit more famous last Evo words. This is how the intercooler spray is working. When it's off, it's yep. targeting 18. When it's on, it's targeting 22. Yep. And then... And you just hit the page up. Well, you want the number, don't you? Oh, everyone wants the number. <laughs> Not usually, but this time I do. I do. So because we're in we're like within two percent of it, three percent. It's so nice and smooth. Three, two, one, fire. What was our, sorry, what, what was the number we're looking for? Are you in closed loop or open loop now? We're in full closed loop. Closed loop. So you're targeting 23? 23, 22 and a half. 22 and a half. Yeah. What's, our, what's our number? Two more, two point something more uh, kilowatts. Working hard. Yeah, man. You just don't want me to go home, is that? No, 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 on? we're going home. Like, we're going home in the next five minutes. We can hang out after this if you want. We don't have to just, like, be here. If you just want to hang, two kilowatts? Jesus. <laughs> Everyone wants it. Yes. The comment section is just exploding with people going, two more kilowatts, two more kilowatts. And then I go home with my tail between my legs in a taxi. How many, if, so if we make like four, is That's that? That's fine. Make five if you want. Nah, four's good. Two to four, how about that? So you can see what we're doing here. Oh, this is RPM versus manifold pressure. So it's got 21 as it comes on. Yep. The harder we rev it. Up and up Slowly and up, massaging so we get up a bit to 23. Yeah, cool. All right. So that's pretty cool. This we... is just dyno number fudging a little bit now, isn't it? No, it's. Oh, look, it'll make it. It's. it's... We're the doing it. Are real. It's all there. We're, we're cool. Um, all I'm making sure of is that our targets are nice and that nothing is changing while we're mucking around here. Yeah, sure. Because if I see that our short term trims start to do something peculiar, I think, yep. hey, hang on, we're not. Is our fuel system got? We're still cool. It's happy. Yep. Cool. Yep. Pump's working. That's good. Pumps are working. Everything's good. I want to have a look at what sort of. Which line was the latest one? The violet one. Yep. And you can see there that it's picked up power up, yeah, up cool. the top. But the curves, you know, yeah. it's all there, man. And like we said before, it was like good car. Good tune. It, it was done well. Yep. yep. Okay, you ready? Yep, let's go. I'm keen as. Lock out sounds like it's working. Everything Everything's sounds like it's working. working away. I know you love this car because it's the first one that's turned up so beautiful and just awesome. <laughs> ready? Yep, let's go. go. Split the difference. But we don't need to make 287. What do we need to make? 277. But like, yeah, as you say. Let's have a look how we went. What, do you have any theories of why it went considerably more? Um, up the very top, I've put a tiny bit of timing in it. Oh, okay. And, it, and it's happy with it. Yeah. Um, That's good. I mean, it's still gone. within, it's in 10 kilowatts either side of what the original dyno sheet said, and 17 kilowatts more than what we got when we were here last time. So, and within telling kilowatts of, of the other car, and that's pretty good, I reckon. Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree. You just don't want to be under, do you? <laughs> Not quite. Especially when he's got that gearbox. Oh, no. Scotty, so, we're done. 
We yeah. are done. Thank you very, very much for all your help today and this amazing yeah. skill that you've acquired over all this time. Because that, that was quick. Man. That was quick. We're there. We'll turn on all the long-term trim stuff. Yeah. We'll let you cruise it for a little while. Yeah, I'm, lo I'm looking forward to driving it, man. Get you back for a health check in a couple of weeks. And you can even Wi-Fi into it whenever you want. Yeah, Plug my just... laptop in, you can Wi-Fi and have a look. This will definitely need awesome. some cold start testing as well, I think, so I better, you know. <laughs> in other words, lend us your car so for just, a couple of months, weeks, just, days. What, whatever it is. Yeah. Right. yeah. Man, thank you so much. No worries, bro. I can't wait to drive it. Well done. Really nice car. Awesome. Buying a second-hand car is always risky. Buying one that's been modified even riskier still. On balance, I'm still ahead with bits I haven't had to buy because they were already installed. And now that I've fixed all the niggly problems, I can finally take this awesome Evo for its first problem-free drive.